So thank uh, Daniele for the invitation so much and then kind introduction. Uh, so it is great to talk at the seminar in Polytechnico in Torino virtually today. Uh, I will talk about multi-scale approximations in stochastic biochemical network. So first, let me briefly introduce my overall research interest. Um, in many cases, uh, stochastic model give a behavior shown from ODE or PDE solution, plus a certain amount of a fluctuation around the mean. On the other hand, a uh, stochastic model can show interesting behavior, uh, especially when the system has a low copy number of species or population. And then usually some, uh, some behavior may not be able to correctly describe by only using deterministic approach. For example, we can observe some stochastic switching of the gene when its copy number is low. We can also see the infected population level that goes ex extinction, hopefully, in the stochastic epidemics model. Uh, when the chemical reaction network involves many species and re reaction, the system dynamics gets more complex and the model is located on the high dimensional space. So one interesting question I usually have is how to reduce the network complexity. Um, I worked on multi-scale approximations of a stochastic model for chemical reaction network. There, uh, when the stochastic process is scaled properly, we can derive some limiting models in the low dimensional sp uh, space that involve less number of species and reaction. And the limiting model captures the system behavior uh, at a certain time scale, uh, at a certain time scale of interest. And this model can be deterministic, stochastic, or piecewise deterministic, depending on the situation. So, um, that was the case when the system is assumed to be well mixed. Now, uh, if we look at um, reaction diffusion processes, now considering both the uh, species copy number and then special distribution um, on the space, then dimension of the stochastic model can be decided by the number of different chemical species involved and the level of spatial resolution we are interested in. For example, the model dimension of the Markov chain model for reaction diffusion processes is gonna be proportional to the number of computational cells, or in other words, the number of voxels uh, where we divide the spatial uh, domain into the voxels. So the other way to reduce the model dimension is to consider an appropriate range of the computational cell size, which directly affects the model dimension. Uh, lastly, uh, for the complex reaction diffusion processes, those model simulation can be slow due to the high dimension. Uh, in that case, we rather develop uh, approximate simulation method to accelerate the simulation of the stochastic model. Um, one way is uh, to do that is to perform multi-scale simulation combining different modeling scheme. So, so far I briefly introduced three different way um, to overcome model complexity due to the high dimension. So the first one was derive uh, approximate model using multi-scale approximation. And then second one was to decide appropriate spatial resolution in the uh, reaction diffusion processes. Finally, we can accelerate simulation by using multi-scale simulation method. Among those three, I will introduce the first approach during the talk using simple examples. So um, in the stochastic model for biochemical reaction network, we assume the system is well mixed, which means we are not gonna look at any special distribution or molecules movement over the space, but we will focus on how the copy numbers or number of molecules of a certain species change over time. We first look at a Markov chain model for chemical reaction network, and then see classical scaling and diffusion approximation using simple example. So before showing that example, let me first briefly explain like what is the Poisson process and then how that can be used to count the number of reaction uh, for the chemical reaction network. So Poisson process we write here as NT is a um, stochastic process. We always start from um, zero at time zero and then it'll increase by one at some random times. So this Poisson process will count the number of times that event happens up to time t or number of arrival uh, that happens from time zero to t. 
For example, if we see nt, that will count the number of event from time 0 to t here. So nt is supposed to be 5 based on this uh, figure, right? And then if we try to write nt minus ns, that refers to the number of arrival between time s to t. So based on this figure, which is going to be 3 over here, okay? So this Poisson process is usually described the number of observation or number of event. And then we are going to use time change the Poisson process actually to count the number of uh, occurrences of each reaction happens up to time t. So um, this Poisson process can be used to model a series of random observation occurring in time. And then those three assumptions are needed. First, observations only occur once at a time. So if we look at maybe one time point, then no observation happens at exactly the same time at all. And then if we observe the number of observation in this joint time interval, for example, zero to t, t to t plus s, those events, two events in the disjoint time intervals are going to be independent. And distribution uh, of the Poisson process from time t to t plus a, the starting time point, uh, the, this distribution does not depend on the starting time point, and it only depends on the duration of the time we are observing the process. So if those three conditions are satisfied, we can find some parameter for Poisson process lambda and then write down the probability. Um, so like um, the probability for the Poisson process from time t to t plus a, we can um, express them in terms of the Poisson probability uh, with the parameter lambda times of the duration time interval a over here. Okay, so now if we, if we look at um, two, um, two trajectory of the processes with the different rates. Uh, those are two realization of the sample path of the Poisson process with the rate t and then 10 times of t. So if the, the rate equals t, which means the unit arri arrival rate of the unit time is going to be on average like one event. If we increase the arrival rate 10 times greater, that the number of uh, mean arrival during unit time is going to be approximately equal to 10. So as we can see, both uh, trajectory will start from zero and then increase by one. And then those arrival times are going to be random. And then frequencies will be decided by those rates inside over here. So what we can observe from here is going to be as we increase the arrival rate, this trajectory looks more smooth and then like a continuous curve. So that's what we are going to use for approximating the Poisson process with a large rate later. All right. So let me briefly introduce the law of large number for Poisson process, which we will use later. So when y is a unit Poisson process, and then now let's uh, set the rate of the Poisson process as a large number k times of u. Um, if we increase k very much and then scale this Poisson process properly by dividing it by k, which means we will increase arrival rate of the process and then jump size of the Poisson process will become one over k. Then when k goes infinity, this uh, normalized process will be approximated by its mean value u. Um, so that law of large numbers for Poisson processes will be used uh, for large k um, um, to approximate the Poisson process with a large rate by its mean value, which is k times of u. So this uh, law of large number for Poisson process will tell us the relationship between the um, Poisson processes and uh, its ODE model. So we can guess that for some cases, ODE model will become a limit or approximation for the Poisson process we are going to use to count the number of reactions. So here's our comparison between the Poisson process with the rate 100 times of t, and then its mean value, it gets even smoother. And then we will see as we increase this number k, then it gets more close to its mean value k times of t over here, right? So uh, let's assume that the system is well mixed 
and then we will denote xit as the copy number of the either species at time t or the number of molecules of the either species at time t. So these xit component will be will change over time and then they will have non-negative integer values. Let's define the state vector xt uh, with its ith component is going to be xit. So the dimension of the state vector xi, xt will be decided by how many um, chemical species we have in the system. Um, and then we will, um, we will define some random process RKT, counting process, in terms of time change the unipersonal process yk over here. So this RKT is a random process. It'll have a non-negative integer value. When time equals zero, it starts from zero. And then whenever the kth reaction happens, uh, it'll increase by one. So they will have a non-negative integer. And then frequency of the kth reaction will be decided by this integral of the propensity function lambda k, which is decided by the law of mass section. Then uh, this xt will become a continuous time Markov jump process. All right, so we can express the state at time t as the initial state plus a linear combination of the reaction term, which is integer valued process multiplied by stoichiometric vector. And then xt will become a vector, which will express the numbers of molecules of all species involved in the system, right? So this is gonna be the Markov chain model for the well-mixed chemical reaction network. So now let's look at a simple system involving two species, S1 and S2. Uh, and then four reactions, uh, production of S1, uh, degradation of S2, and reversible con conversion between S1 and S2. Now the dimension of the state vector xt is going to be two because there are two species. And then first component refers to the number of molecules of the S1. And then second one refers to the number of molecules of S2. And then we can write down the equation for each component in terms of initial value and then reaction terms for four different reactions. For example, whenever the second reaction happens, we will lose one molecule of S1 and then gain one molecule of S2 because S1 becomes S2. So we will get R2 term with a negative sign in terms uh, in the equation for the first species. And then we will see this same process with a positive sign in the equation for the second species. And then all four reaction terms will be expressed as time change the Poisson processes. And the frequency will be expressed by those propensity functions. Uh, those propensities are going to be decided by the stochastic version of the law of mass section, which tells uh, us that each reaction rate is proportional to the product of the copy numbers of the reactant. So for example, for the third species, it's going to be proportional to the num copy number of S2. So uh, using this kind of a construction, uh, we will try to uh, scale the system based on some assumption. So now what we are going to assume is going to be, we assume that all copy numbers of both S1 and S2 are large, and then they are approximately of order n, which refers to some large number or some large scaling parameter. And then its actual value and not is going to be volume multiplied by Avogadro's number. Uh, and then we also assume that uh, all the reaction rates are fast and then they are of order n. And then for that, we will assume production is going to be proportional to n and then all other rate remaining rates are the same as uh, are going to be of order one. So what we want to do is we are going to scale the process and then later let n go to infinity and then try to derive the limit. So uh, we will, uh, our copy number was of order n. So we will normalize the species number and then define define the normalized copy number as xi divided by n. We also um, scale the first production rate because this one was also of order n, and then define the scaled reaction rate kappa 1 as kappa 1 prime divided by n, right? So whole equation was divided by n. So each reaction term was divided by n, which means the jump size becomes 1 over n instead of like increase or decrease by one molecule. And then before there was a kappa 2 prime x1. So we divide the copy number by n and then multiply by n here, all right? 
And then now what we can do is we will express the reaction rate as a scaled reaction rate, which is supposed to be of order one, and then express the normalized copy number, uh, which is supposed to be over, over order one by C1 as a normalized variable, right? Uh, which uh, refers to the concentration of uh, the first species. Now, if we compare the uh, end term, the inside and outside of the Poisson process, we can see the rate of the Poisson process becomes a large of order n, and then scaled, um, scaled rate multiplied by normalized uh, species copy number here, which will be divided by the large number n, the same order, so that we can apply the law of large number for Poisson process. And then as n goes to infinity, the limit becomes integral of the deterministic term, which will be expressed in terms of a scaled rate multiplied by the concentration of the first species. So this really uh, is called the classical scaling when the species copy number of all species are large and then all the reaction rate happens quite frequently with the same order as n. Uh, then this normalized stochastic process will be approximated as a solution of ODE, as we see uh, on the right-hand side over here. Okay, so let's apply the same scaling for the uh, first production term two in the next slide. So we divide by N and then convert kappa one prime T as uh, kappa one, and then with the large rate N, and then using applying the law of large number, then it'll be approximated as some constant term, which is a function of t. So we will define the limit of the normalized copy number as ci, which is concentration of the ID species, and assume that the limit of the normalized initial value is going to be converging to some positive concentration. Then we can write the equation for the uh, limit of the first component which will be really a solution of ODE. Uh, and then this will give the uh, equation for the concentration of the first species. So through the classical scaling, under certain assumption that reaction rates are large and the copy numbers are all large with the same order, then we can uh, derive, we can normalize the species copy number by this large number n, and then show that the uh, that converges to the limiting equation, which is uh, which is uh, a solution of the deterministic equation. Now, what we are curious about is going to be then what's going to be the error between the normalized copy number versus its limit, and then this can be obtained by applying uh, the diffusion approximation over here. Okay, so now what we are going to do is uh, this left hand side is going to be y1 divided by n term. So first reaction term only. And then what we are going to do the mean value over here so that we can separate the drift term and then fluctuation around the drift or mean or noise term. So we split the uh, Poisson, scaled Poisson process into two parts. Now, using the central limit theorem, the first noisy part will be approximated by time changed Brownian motion, and then we will have drift I mean, coming from the mean. And then we can do the same thing for first production term and then a uh, second conversion term from S1 to S2. So, uh, using this diffusion approximation, the equation for the first species concentration of S1 will become the drift term with the fluctuation, which was expressed in terms of time changed Brownian motion. So this becomes a solution of a stochastic differential equation. And then uh, this equation is also called the Langevin equation, which will give the second level of approximation. So including the drift and then fluctuation around the drift, right? So those uh, classical scaling and diffusion approximation is gonna be the first step uh, where we can apply when the copy number of all species are large of order n, and then all the reactions happen really quickly of order n, okay? And then this is not always true for the general chemical reaction network. When the chemical reaction network involves many species and reactions, it is possible that it has uh, multiple scaling, which means some reactions are fast and then the others are slow. And then some species copy number is larger compared to the other ones and then contain multiple scales. So what we are gonna do now is gonna be, we will uh, look at multi-scale approximation method uh, 
where we will um, use different scaling for the copy numbers and reaction rate constant. There are uh, several previous work, um, and then some of them focus on deriving the approximate model in the low dimensional space uh, by classifying the chemical species into slow or fast species, or the classifying the reaction into slow or fast reactions. And then some of others uh, focus on the developing um, efficient simulation algorithm for chemical reaction network using their multi-scale nature. Uh, I will uh, focus on those two uh, last two work. Um, um, in 2006, Bull et al. first introduced the multi-scale approximation method for chemical reaction network, and then introduce, uh, up, try to apply this method to simple uh, um, examples. And after that, uh, my advisor and me um, generalized this multi-scale approximation method uh, for the cases with the multiple time scales um, when the system involves multiple time scales. So let's look at the exactly the same simple example involving two species and four reactions, and then we will assign different assumptions now. Now let's assume that first species, its copy number is large, like over order 100, so that initial value was uh, setting as uh, 100. And then second species copy number is uh, small, so they have uh, different scales in species copy number. Also assume that uh, the production and then degradations are happening a lot more frequently compared to the reversible conversion between S1 and S2, right? So here we will assume X1 is large, X2 is small. Now what we are gonna do is we'll set some value, large value and not, uh, which is actually set it as a thousand and then try to express the number of molecules of those two species in terms of some power of n naught, and then express the stochastic rate constant in terms of some power of n naught. For example, those xi will be expressed in terms of some power of n naught with the appropriate choice of the scaling exponent of i, then with multiplied by the normalized copy number zi. So, uh, alpha i's are going to be chosen so that this normalized copy number zi becomes of order one. And then we can do the same thing for the stochastic rate constant kappa k prime. We will express that as uh, n not to the power of beta k, which is going to be chosen appropriately. And then multiply by the scaled rate constant kappa k, which is supposed to be of order one. Okay. So for example, x1 was uh, of order of 100 then we are going to select alpha 1 as 1, so that expressing x1 as 1,000 to the power of 1, multiply by the normalized copy number, which is of order 1 or about like 0.1. So the choice of this alpha i or beta k have some kind of flexibility, because the only condition we need to assign over here is going to be normalized copy number and scaled rate are going to be of order 1, which is quite vague. And then that can be some number between 0 to 10. Okay. So that was the time change, random time change representation for the component of the uh, two components of the state vector for the copy number of S1 and S2, which I introduced before. So now what we are gonna do is we will replace X1 by the normalized copy number Z1. And then we will replace all the propensity function like Xi by Zi and then replace kappa k prime by kappa k with some uh, power of n naught, okay? Then we will replace n naught by a uh, scaling parameter n. Then what we can see is gonna be, we can obtain a family of processes parameterized by n. So the system dynamics of the actual system becomes when this uh, parameterized process uh, um, becomes uh, when this n becomes n naught. So now uh, this normalized process, we um, divide the species copy number by n to the power of alpha i, so that this zi becomes of order one. We have uh, some extra exponent gamma, and then we can see the time t was replaced by t multiplied by n to the power of gamma. So the reason why we replace uh, the time component by this t times n to the gamma is because 
we want to identify the time scales of different species, actually species S1 and S2, in terms of a power of n. So we apply the time change by replacing t by this term over here. Okay. So whole equation for x1 was divided by n to the alpha 1. So we have those blue factor over here due to the normalization of the copy number. So the jump size of the process was reduced by 1 over n to the alpha i. Now we replace all x1 or x2 term by g1 and g2 term. So we'll have this red extra n to the alpha 1 or n to the alpha 2 due to the scaling. We apply the time changes. So we have extra n to the gamma term for each propensity function. We also replace the reaction rate constant by the scaled rate kappa k. So that extra n to the beta 2, n to the beta 3, n to the beta 1 term over here. So what we are going to apply to get the limit is going to be we will set n goes to infinity and then derive the limit of g, g1 and gamma as n goes to infinity. And the, the value of the limit can vary from 0 to some non-zero limit or infinity value depending on the choice of the time scaling exponent gamma, which means that when the time is only, this reaction does not happen that frequently compared to the order of magnitude of the copy number so that the reaction's occurrence is approximated as a zero. When the time is large enough, then the number of occurrence of the reaction is going to be comparable to the order of magnitude of the copy number so that we can derive some limit in terms of deterministic term or stochastic term over here. When time gets large, then this reaction happens too frequently so that the limit becomes like infinity, all right? And then the derivation of the limit is uh, like, especially the first part is all based on the um, law of large number for Poisson processes. So when this exponents of the blue term here matches with the uh, maximal exponents of the old reaction term like inside of the Poisson process, which is going to be the red term, when they become equal for that choice of gamma, we can derive the limit, which will be one of those two forms depending on the alpha i value. When alpha i is greater than zero, which means the copy number of the i species is large, the limit becomes deterministic, like part of the solution of ODE. When alpha i is equal to zero, uh, which means the copy number of the i species is uh, low, then the limit will become stochastic and expressed as the Poisson process again, a uh, time change the Poisson process for the reaction part, right? So we will use those limit, and then we can derive uh, we can derive the uh, limiting model for different time scale uh, we are interested in. Then how can we choose those exponent value alpha i or beta k's? We, uh, I already mentioned that those alpha or betas are going to be decided so that the normalized copy number g i or scaled rate kappa k becomes of order one, which is quite vague uh, conditions. So here are more specific condition, which is called the balance condition. So what it gives us is going to be four species S1, we get equality or one inequality here. For species S2, we get some equality or some uh, inequality. So what it says is going to be uh, our goal was deriving some limiting model uh, where the limit does not blow up to infinity and it does not become zero all the time. So for to obtain those kind of non-zero and then uh, not uh, non-zero limit, um, the production, uh, the, the order of magnitude of the production should match with the order of magnitude of the consumption term, which means maximal exponent for the positive term, production term, should be the same as the maximal exponent of the negative term, like consumption term, for the first species. If there's some imbalance between production and then consumption of the first species, then the order of magnitude of S1 should be large enough so that this imbalance can be canceled out. So either equality should work or uh, gamma will be restricted by some upper bound, which is given in the second inequality. Okay. So unless 
consumption and then productions are matched um, with respect to the first species. The choice of alpha and beta will be valid up to certain time scale that will satisfy the second inequality. We can get the similar uh, balance condition from the equation of the second uh, species. So um, either maximal exponent of the production for the second species matches with the maximal exponent of the consumption term of the second species. Otherwise, if they are imbalanced, then the second species copy number should be large enough compared to all the production and consumption term so that we will have some restriction on the time scale we are going to consider, uh, which, which is provided by this upper bound with respect to gamma. So uh, we choose one set of the parameter value of alpha and beta that satisfy those four conditions. So I'll re remember that our assumption for the first species copy number was large with order n. And the second species was low, so it has uh, over order n to the power of zero, which refers to over order one. And remember, production and degradation was fast, so they are over order one. Uh, while the conversion, reversible conversion between S1 and S2 were uh, slow, so that they are of order n to the power of negative one, right? So let's use this scaling and then plug in. Then we will identify two different time scale when gamma equals zero and gamma equals one, which refers to time order of order n to the power of zero, time of order one, or time of order n. So early time or later time. So in the early time, uh, we can get the limit for the second species because second species is uh, uh, moving faster and then first species uh, does not evolve yet in this early time scale. Because this second species copy number was low, uh, the, its normalized copy number was approximated as this stochastic equation in terms of time change the Poisson process. So we can see that for the time scale we are interested in, in the early time, we can see our full system with the two species and four reactions was reduced to one dimensional equation involving only two reactions. So for even this simple example, we can see um, the limiting model was located in the low dimensional space. Now let's try to look at the later time scale when gamma equals one. Now this species, a slow species start to evolve and then approximated as a solution of ODE, deterministic equation. Now what happened to this fast species S2? This fast species fluctuate a lot and then already evolved so much. So in this later time scale, uh, its average behavior is approximated as a function of the slow species over here. So conditional e equilibrium distribution of the second species was obtained in, as a Poisson process with the rate depends on the slow species as one over here. Okay, so now if we get those two limit for two time scales we are interested in, how can we use those limit to approximate the behavior in the full system? So what we can do is gonna be when the time is over order one, which, uh, which corresponds to the case when gamma equals zero, we can approximate X2 using just the limit Z2 by applying time backward. So like gamma was zero, so T will be the same if we apply time, uh, uh, we time change backward over here. So just a D2 will approximate the behavior, mean behavior of the X2 without those fluctuation around the mean. When the time is late of order n naught, so time scale is about the order of a thousand, then x1 will be approximated by n naught multiplied by z1 because x1 was x, uh, z1, the normalized copy number was x1 divided by n. So uh, our x1 can be approximated by the actual value of n we were using, which was n naught multiplied by this limit uh, with the uh, with the application of the time change backward using n naught over here, right? So if we use this uh, limit and then approximate the original process, uh, we can get the mean behavior of the, those two species. Now, uh, what we want to see is going to be, um, we want to see like what happened, uh, what, what about uh, the behavior other than the mean behavior. So what's going to be the error between the normalized copy number versus its limit? 
So what we are interested in now is going to be the behavior of the normalized copy number versus its limit z1 over here. So what we are going to do is we will, sub, we will um, add the propensity of the Poisson process and then subtract the Poisson process so that we can express a drift term with the centered Poisson process over here. And then we write down the limiting equation for the first species, which is just solution of ODE. And then subtract those two, and then define the error of order n to the power of one half, so skirt of n. So now we will derive the equation for the limit of this u n, so that we can approximate the error between those process with over order skirt of n. Okay, so let's subtract those two terms and then multiply by n to the power of skirt of n, and then replace all the uh, scale, the difference of the variable by u n term, and then take the limit. Then we can show that this u n converges to u, which become a solution of SDE over here, which will have drift term and then diffusion term. So once we get this uh, limit uh, using Gaussian approximation, what we can use is gonna be, we not only approximate the a copy number of x1 in terms of z, z1. Uh, this will give the approximation of the copy number of order n naught. We can also approximate the copy number of skirt of n naught, like fluctuation around the mean using the limit of this SDE over here. So that gives us the second level of approximation. Okay, so this was a multi-scale approximation for using the uh, law of large number and then Gaussian approximation. Okay, now let's try to compare the simulation results for those two species. Those blue trajectory are gonna be the copy number of X1 and X2 uh, from the full simulation, uh, the simulation of the full system, including two species and four reactions. And then those red ones are the approximation derived from the limiting model we derived. I mean, from the stochastic equation and then determinacy equation. So we can see that when we apply the multi-scale approximation, the mean of the first species was captured quite well. On the other hand, the uh, second species copy number was uh, a little bit less compared to the original system. I think that's because some of the reaction happens uh, still uh, significantly frequently, but which was approximated as zero in the multi-scale approximation. So we lost those portion during the approximation process. Now, if we uh, add the second level approximation from obtained from the Gaussian approximation, uh, so drift plus solution of SDE, we can see this approximation, which is a lot closer compared to uh, a lot closer to the copy number of the full system for S1 here. Okay, so that was a brief introduction about multi-scale method, um, and then we try to apply that to the simple example. So now what I would like to show is going to be uh, application of the multi-scale approximation method to well-known simple enzyme kinetics, which is called michaels menten kinetics. This approximation is also called standard QSSA, quasi steady state approximations. So let me first uh, introduce the system involving four species S, E, C, P. So S represents some metabolic substrate, E refers to enzyme, and then C is gonna be complex, um, like substrate enzyme complex, like combination of S and E. And then it'll become some product, which is gonna be P. So this uh, three reaction described S combines with E so that it becomes complex reversibly. And then this complex will make some product and then free the enzyme as E over here with the uh, E reversible reaction. Okay. So now this system is a very simple system and is studied very widely because even uh, with those three species, it can show interesting behavior. So those brackets refers to the concentration of SECP. Then we can write down the uh, equation for the concentration of four species uh, using a uh, deterministic approach as uh, a differential equation, a system of differential equation. So as we can see, uh, we can, um, there are four reaction terms with K1, K minus one, K2, 
uh, three reaction term with K1, K minus one and K2 that corresponds to those three reactions. Um, and the interesting feature of this simple system is gonna be there are two conservation of the total amount of the substrate concentration and enzyme concentration, which we can see easily by adding the equation for S and C and P, we can see the addition of a derivative of um, um, S, C and P with respect to time T becomes a zero. So the total concentration of S plus C plus P becomes some constant all the time. Similarly, the total concentration of enzyme, which is E plus C, um, derivative becomes zero. So their total con concentration of the enzyme becomes, I mean, conserved. So using those con two conservation law, this full system, four dimensional full, full system can be reduced to two equations. Now, if we apply the multi-scale approximation, we can derive the uh, limiting equation actually only for S. So we can reduce further from two equation to one equation for the substrate. Um, so here it explained the deterministic version of the standard QSSA. Uh, what we are going to assume is going to be a total concentration of the substrate S is a lot larger compared to the total com uh, concentration of the enzyme, or this michaelis menten constant is a lot larger compared to the to total enzyme concentration, which means that um, which means that um, the uh, ratio between the consumption rate of a C versus the production rate of the C is going to be a lot larger compared to the uh, concentration of the C, uh, concentration of the E over here. Okay, so if this condition for standard QSSA is uh, satisfied, what we can do is going to be C becomes a fastly evolving species. So we can assume this uh, concentration of complex C reach to the steady state quite quickly so that we can assume uh, this DCDT equals zero. Then this will give the uh, equa one equation, like uh, the right-hand side equals zero, so that um, using the con conservation of the total amount of the enzyme concentration, we can express the first species concentration C in terms of a slow species concentration S, which is obtained as a rational function over here. And then our reduced system becomes just equation for the substrate concentration, just one equation. So this is uh, called the deterministic standard QSSA. We can derive using the system of order differential equation. We can do the similar thing when we apply multi-scale approximation to the uh, stochastic model for this enzyme kinetics. So now let's try to write down Markov chain model for this uh, simple enzyme kinetics, which will give us uh, four equation um, so that state vector becomes uh, four dimension, uh, which corresponds to a substrate, enzyme, complex, and product. And then each reaction term, like three reaction terms are expressed as a time change in the Poisson process with Y1, Y minus one, Y2 as before, okay? So every time this, second reaction happened, we will lose one molecule of C and then gain one molecule of P and one molecule of E. So Y2 term appears as a minus sign in the equation of a C and then with a plus sign in the equation for E and P over here. Right? So we will use these equations and then a multi-scale approximation. So now let's try to express the copy number of each species in terms of a power of n multiplied by normalized copy number. And then express the stochastic rate coefficient kappa k prime in terms of some power of n multiplied by normalized copy number kappa k. And then we will choose up i and beta k so that it satisfy balance condition uh, so that uh, the normalized copy number zi and then scale the rate coefficient kappa k becomes over order one, right? So we chose uh, alpha as alpha p equals one because uh, based on the condition for uh, the QSSA, the substrate copy numbers are supposed to be a lot larger compared to the enzyme copy numbers. So the exponent for the enzyme like E and C becomes a zero. Also, consumption rate of C 
should be much faster compared to the production rate of the C. So that we assign the corresponding exponent, which will be expressed in terms of a power of n. All right. So we uh, um, divide all the equation by n to the power of alpha i, and then express the equation in terms of normalized copy number of z i over here, and then inside of the propensity two, and then m here is going to be the normalized the total amount of enzymes. So it's going to be just a ZC plus a ZE. And then we also replace the uh, stochastic reaction rate coefficient uh, kappa K prime in terms of uh, some power of N multiplied by kappa K. Okay? So we can see all equation was divided by N or it was divided by one depending on the scale. And then each uh, propensity function was expressed in terms of the normal like, copy number scaled rate with some power of n in front of that. Okay, so all of those propensity uh, now becomes of order n because of this uh, n over here. Okay, so now if we let n go to infinity, the fastly evolving species equation like C equations, um, this becomes uh, those three terms goes to infinity so that we can divide the whole equation by n and then get the limit over here. And then we can get the limiting equation for s. Okay, So this equation involves both fast species and slow species, like fast species C and then slow species s. And then using the second equation, we can express uh, the average behavior of the fastly moving species C in terms of a slow species S over here. Okay. Finally, the limiting model we can get, the reduced system we can get is going to be just one dimensional equation for the slow species substrate. And then we can get the mean behavior of the C in terms of S like that. So this looks very similar to the reduced system we derived using the deterministic um, SQSSA, which was derived from the system of ODE. Uh, the major difference is going to be this ZS and ZC does not refer to the concentration anymore. It's rather the normalized copy number because our N um, does not have any specific meaning. Like it's not going to be the volume of the system, but this is going to be some specific large number we use uh, to scale the whole system. So the relationship between the original copy number for S and P and E and C, and then the limit or norm uh, limit is gonna be, we can uh, limit was the normalized, the limit of the normalized copy number. So X, ZS is gonna be XS divided by N. ZC is gonna be the same as XC because we didn't scale the complex. And then uh, our copy number can be expressed in terms of a volume factor multiplied by concentration. So, uh, this relationship will give us the direct relationship between the limit versus concentration we saw before. So it's going to be just a uh, uh, transformed uh, variable from the concentration, right? So to derive this kind of reduced system, we can move backward and then derive uh, the condition for the standard QSSA, stochastic version of the uh, standard QSSA, which is going to be um, based on our choice of the exponent alpha and beta, the time scale of the C should be a lot quicker compared to the other species S. So the time scale of C should be, uh, so time scale of S should be a lot slower than the time scale of C. And then next, we express E in terms of a total enzyme minus complex. And then to express like that, Xe is supposed to be uh, less or equal to Xc. And then to validate I, our choice of the beta for the reaction rate, the consumption rate of the C should be much faster compared to the consumption rate of the production of the C. And then those ratios should match with the, the order of magnitude of the species copy number of the substrate over here. Okay, So this will give some condition for stochastic version of SQSSA. Um, which will become a subset of the uh, deterministic condition for SQSSA we saw before, uh, which was uh, um, total concentration of enzyme E naught should be less uh, than uh, S naught 
uh, which was total concentration of substrate plus Km Michael's method um, constant. So, so far, uh, we were trying to apply the multi-scale approximation in, the uh, in this um, enzyme kinetics involving um, substrate, complex enzyme, and product. And then we were able to use the conservation law, to conservation law, and then multi-scale approximation to derive this one-dimensional equation for the slow species. So here, uh, this uh, is the summary of the uh, talk. So I first tried to uh, introduce the Markov chain model for well-mixed chemical reaction network. Uh, and then we were able to express uh, this Markov chain model using time change of Poisson process to count the number of each reaction's occurrence. We look at classical scaling and diffusion approximation, of assuming that all the copy number of all species are large of order n, and then all the reaction happens quite frequently of order n. Now we uh, develop multi-scale approximation method for the general chemical reaction network, uh, where the system has multiple time scale, which means species copy number can be very different. Some of them are large and then some are small. And the reactions, some of them are fast, uh, and then some of them are slow. And then we were able to apply the multi-scale approximation. And then we also look at uh, simple enzyme kinetics and then see how the standard uh, quasi steady state approximation was derived directly from the stochastic model, Markov chain model using the multi-scale approximation method. So this was the work with my advisor during my PhD and then Lea Popovich. And then the example for simple enzyme kinetics was collaboration with Greg Rampalar, Washa Kurabash, and then Heinz Kropel. And this work was supported by the National Science Foundation. So thank you for, so much for your attention. Uh, and then thank you so much for your understanding for the inconvenience due to the audio during the talk.